Welcome back, guys. I'm actually going to finish off this crate. Uh, at least up to the low poly point. I'm probably going to make a low poly and bake normals and aim an occlusion. So, what you're looking at is my high poly. I tend to just jump right in here, so let's do that. Uh, I actually want to turn on display selected with edged faces so that when I select something it highlights looks like I have my lid already grouped which is kind of good it's what I want okay <clears throat> okay, just kind of imagining here how I'm going to approach this. Uh, I'm going to create a box, center it to the world, Let's go in and create quick material. So I have a button for that. I like a kind of a blue for my material, my low poly material. like I'm going with 96 units nice six units it's getting me started I actually want to go ahead and convert this to edible poly drop into that front view swift loop split that yeah that edge I got four edges selected it says right there I'm gonna do a split so this should be a separate element now and I'll go ahead and raise that up Maybe just hide it. Detach. Yeah, I'm gonna do a detach. Make it a separate object, and then hide it. So my crate's gonna have an inside. I'm gonna take this a little bit further in terms of the low poly than just a basic box. And I'm just kind of doing shift drag methods, whether that be a move tool or scale tool. I'm holding shift and I'm making extra geometry here. So I'm just shift dragging it in to make the inside. Whoops. No more than I need. And then I'll uh, probably just shift drag that in, do a collapse, grab that center vert. And then remove it. So we'll probably take a look at this. I have an inside box. There's no no borders. There's no holes in this. That's what we want. And so uh, I tend to kind of think of my low poly a lot like uh, my high poly process. In that, right now I'm just doing a blocking for my low poly, and so I want to get all kind of the uh, the main silhouettes in there. And then I'll worry about maybe cutting in some of this uh, extra detail. So with that, I'm actually going to snap my lid back down. I'm going to unhide that piece that I hid earlier. And let's, uh, let's just go ahead and hide the whole bottom. Grab that border. 
go to my scale tool, I'm gonna scale it in, shift scale, and then I'm gonna shift drag it down. It's looking a little too tight, so I might uh, just, I'll, I tend to drop into my uh, freeform or my transform type in dialog box. You can get to this by right clicking on one, either your move tool, rotate tool, or your scale tool. And in this case, I did it for the scale tool. Uh, and uh, what I, the reason I like to do, uh, kind of get in here is because it's kind of hard to, to drag this into the exact spot that I want if I'm just scaling it. So what I'd prefer to do is to go to the spinner here and hold Alt, and that'll let me drag at a really kind of small amount, small enough that I can just get real precise. And then there, that seems to match that silhouette much better. didn't bring it down quite far enough so I mean if I were to show you that again I could go to the move tool and just kind of nudge it holding alt in that spinner that's better do the same thing remove that center vert I don't need it at the moment maybe I can take that single face here and just slide it down a bit take that spinner probably good enough to say the truth and so really uh, you could call I mean it just depends on how far you want to take this crate I mean honestly uh oh hmm there is a current the application will close Do you want to attempt to save the current scene let's do it save it <laughs> It's okay. We'll just launch Max again. Bear with me. It's part of working in CG. Things crash. Mm. One of the cool things about Max, uh, really any significant 3D software these days, uh, is under documents. Max auto back it saves every so often an auto save so Max has an auto back that you can get back to I have a quick location for that recent that's just my setup and then I'm back so I barely lost any time uh, it's weird that crashed on a an unhide for me and I just tried it again and it crashed again. So no need to save it again, so I'm gonna go let's do this one more time. Maybe more times. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Goodness. What's wrong? Weird. Mine hide. Mm. So this is my blocking, for kind of for my uh, low poly. And honestly, I mean it's not really complete as a low poly, but maybe you know if you were, to, depending on your game or whatever the out uh, outcome for your game, this may uh, be about as much resolution or uh, silhouette as you would need out of this crate. 
You see I simplified most of this. Uh, but I'm actually going to take it a little further. I'm going to inset this top. And then I'm going to extrude it down. The extrude tool. Feeling like I need to uh, scale that in just a little bit. So I undo that and go back to my transform tool, scale, pull it in just a little, extrude. So these inside walls just match a little bit better. A little too, uh, maybe I took it too far out. So undo again. I'm going to make sure I get this right. Just a little bit. Extrude. Boom. And you can see that those uh, silhouettes kind of hug each other a little bit, uh, a little bit better. And you know that because uh, these faces are what they call Z-fighting, trying to fight for the viewer's attention because they're literally sitting on, uh, sitting right on top of each other in the exact same uh, space. I call that good blocking for that. I'm um, definitely wanting to cut in the sides here. I'll select all these sides. The bottom two. I'm going to inset, whoops, by polygon, inset by polygon, I'm going to jump into x-ray mode here, make sure my values are sort of correct, I'm hoping 10.8 uh, is looking pretty good, and then I'm going to do an extrude, Interesting. That's okay. So I'm gonna have to adjust my uh, my sides here. Get rid of Discord. It's talking to me. Goodness. Fine. I'll just <laughs> go in here and uh, destroy you that way. Yeah. Get out of here. I'm gonna have to readjust my sides because my inset isn't on a square because it was including the bottom lid uh, and that's okay I actually want that to be a part of the base box I don't want the bottom lid to come off at all so what I'll do isolate this real quick I'm gonna grab these edges, these little inside polygons. And uh, I'm centering my pivot point to my selection so that I can do kind of an inward scale on that. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna fix, isolate again. And I'm going to fix all, uh, all of the bottoms, these bottom polygons. I have to raise them up. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm gonna, how I'm going to handle 
these sort of diagonal planks is uh, I don't want to cut them in because if I try to weld them into one shape it's going to make it more uh, this box more expensive so I'm going to I'm actually going to float this uh, plank of wood and so I'm, I'm actually duplicating my high poly so that I can ungroup and really just woo. <laughs> Try all that again. Group. Uh, okay, it's telling me it's not grouped. Thought it was. Delete that. Grab that plank. Invert my selection. Delete. Do the same thing over here. Delete that turbo smooth. Delete these outside pieces. I'm gonna make them blue, put my material on it. And realign it to my original mesh. That worked because I'm actually clean with my pivot points, at least in this tutorial. <laughs> and I wanna simplify these uh, planks here. I don't need all the back facing geometry. Uh, I'm gonna do a select by angle set to 45 and I'm just going to go through and select some of these larger surfaces. I actually want to keep that side. Ignore back facing on. Delete all that extra geometry so it's just kind of a floating semi box. I'm going to select those edges, I'm going to loop, and then remove. Probably don't need those edges, loop and remove. Let's do that to the top two, loop, remove. I'm thinking of what I'm going to do to simplify the geometry on this, take it down even further, is rather than have edge loops on either side, uh, I think I'd rather chamfer these little edges. One, two, chamfer. Of a subtle amount, but I'll probably need it in the end, anyways. <clears throat> Make the smoothing look good. If I treat that edge like that, I'm probably going to have to treat a good majority of the edges like that as well. So I don't know how I feel about that. Remove these. Actually, ignore back facing. Put a polygon by angle. Set these edges. Loop and remove. Loop and remove. Loop and remove. Keep it like that. Well, maybe we decide that we want a different uh, plank, but for now, so for now, I kind of have two. I have one with the chamfer, and one with uh, extra edge loops on it. Sort of see where this takes me. important that those align. Um, so for the most part that's it, but I know that my smoothing groups aren't clean. I would actually go through, select all my geometry and clear it, put it on one, and that's gross. <laughs> so. We'll end up doing a smoothing group pass on this. 
I just want to clear smoothing groups for the lid as well. Clear, put on one. Control A, put on smoothing groups, clear them, put them on one. Look how much cleaner that plank is. It's real nice. I'm actually liking how it looks with the edge loops, even though it is a little bit more expensive. And that's probably how I'm gonna have to treat everything. I just I'm not a real big fan of chamfers on uh, lo on low poly sometimes, just because they can be kind of difficult to uh, remove chamfers where. You have to almost have to rebuild the geometry where versus an edge loop. You can just remove it and and, uh, and that's it. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to remove that. We'll keep this. And then that gives me uh, what I need to know to make the rest of this crate look good. Uh, I guess before I finalize that. I'd like to clean some of this, flatten that out. Same for these line vertices, flatten. And then double check it against the silhouette of my high poly. Make sure that everything's still lined up nicely. So how I'm gonna approach my crate is to I'm gonna use the cut tool here. I'm just going to start cutting across to clean up some of these uh, longer quads happening here. Not really a fan of. I know this is kind of sloppy. Really, an easy, uh, probably an easier way to do that. And this is a hotkey. It's something I have set to a hotkey, but I use it all the time. It's under graphite modeling tools. Oh, I believe it's under edges. Geometry, edges, loops, insert, I believe. Nope. There it is. Insert vertices. And you can select, select how many vertices you want, and then it'll just input that vert into an edge. Something like that. See that? Put one right there. Go back to my edge. Right here, this little mouse button with a explosion next to it. <laughs> Uh, I could set that to three and then click that and it would insert three vertices sort of evenly spaced and so that's kind of what I'm gonna do but I have it on a hotkey so I tend to just select my edge and insert one and I'm gonna use my snaps to place that evenly against these uh, down here do that again just rinse and repeat insert vertex, align it with snaps, and I'm going to do it to the top too, insert, and really I could do all these at the same time, so if I go click on all these corners, boom, 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 insert vertice, and then move them up and align, And then I'm doing a connect vertex, which is also under the vertex sub-object, connect vertex. Boom. Oops.
So you just saw me insert a vert and uh, split it with the chamfer tool. Oh, it looks like I didn't adjust that bottom face. It's not the same distance. Maybe it's not like that on the high poly. I don't know, but I need to... Oh, crash again. It looks like it saved. So that's good. Don't have to redo too much of that. Come on. Oh. was a <laughs> okay guess it looks okay so I thought this uh, I was seeing that this plank was thinner than that one so I was wondering what no it's how I made it <laughs> back to finishing connecting all these connect vertex so it's insert vertex and connect vertex insert move with snaps highlight the ones I want connect vertex snap connect vertex So because this is a low poly, uh, these triangles really should be there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rotate them though. Let's see what my hotkey, it's been a while. Could be because I don't have, there it is. So this is a spin edge. It's also under the modeling uh, graphite modeling tools. Spin edge. So I can select an edge and spin it. So I'm just kind of uh, adjusting my low poly so that these edges uh, are cleaner. And that may not mean anything to some of you students at the moment, but. Uh, there are better ways to turn your triangles to kind of help normal maps and so what I'm doing is I'm actually turning to protect uh, the smoothing across this corner or the normals across that corner going quiet on you because I've already explained what I'm doing here jamming out to my music it's kind of late night rinse and repeat 
insert vertex, connect vertex, chamfer, yada yada. Snaps, 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 Ooh. snaps. Check my smoothing group, see how all of that is averaging, still pretty terribly. <laughs> Imagine how I'm gonna clean this up. Maybe it's gonna be a pretty expensive crate. I think I want to chamfer all the edges. Just maybe see what this looks like. I even really need that much of a chamfer. Not really. Hmm. If I do that on the uh, inside silhouette there like that, then I'm definitely going to have to do it on the outside silhouette. How many tries am I at right now? Let's see. Let me get rid of this. And then check my... We want to see how much this crate costs currently. <laughs> and what I mean is uh, if I turn on triangle count, I'm under viewport configuration, statistics, we're gonna set it to selection, apply, and then hit seven on your keyboard to turn that on. 228 tries for the bottom part of this crate so far, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. See, even just removing those chamfers brings it back down to 164 for this uh, bottom crate. So, tell you what I will do. I'm actually thinking that these triangles are in my way. Usually you do want to wait till the end of a low poly to start triangulating because you're just going to find yourself removing and re-adding these back in. Gives me the power to huh. not like that, maybe more like I'm 
I'm gonna chamfer all the major outside silhouettes of the crate. Chamfer, get in here close. I'm gonna chamfer really to the outside of the, the highlight. I mean, that's where it starts changing, but I think I, I would catch a better um, a better normal map if I kind of make this chamfer the actual sort of width maximum width of that highlight that edge highlight and check on that Clear smoothing groups. So that gave me a pretty good, pretty clean low poly for the outside, anyways. And then I'm thinking for the inside, what's going to happen is I'm going to put all of these faces. on their own smoothing group so it's going to look like this clear that no 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 grow our selection and then clear and I'm going to put it on two so all those inside faces are on their own smoothing group and then I might even want to take it further than that maybe these also can be on their own to sort of protect edge smoothing Ugh, doing that the hard way so these edges are currently on a smoothing group this one's on a smoothing group, and then really the outside uh, section is all on a smoothing group. Boom, let's do it to this one. This one's on three, so this one should probably also be on three, and then these would be on two. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually take the top ones so that these aren't smoothing against each other. You see how long of a gradient that is? That's bothering me. So we're going to do these two. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Click. Click. I don't want to chamfer the inside because it's the inside, you're not going to see it as much. So all these faces will go on two, and this face will go on three. Pretty, pretty good by angle. Select.
well, let's do it anyways. Well, let's see what it looks like with the... crash again? No. match that lid now chamfer at it. Grow that selection, grow button. Clear, put on two. Clear, put on three. Boom, boom, boom. Four. close to calling this crate low poly done. Uh, I was kind of just really in that last stretch I was just kind of finessing I think in the end I'm, I, I am gonna go with the chamfer. It's just a tad cheaper and for the most part it'll look just as good.
Whoa. Hotkeys aren't the same. Check this lid. Probably do the same for this little inside bit. Same being remove the smoothing groups and clear them out just so they look better, a little flatter. What's this cost? 340, that's not terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. Forget to triangulate your low poly. So before I triangulate all this last stuff, I'm actually going to 
save it so I have a good jump off point in case I don't like what it looks like after I triangulate and get everything ready. Six, save it a seven. Actually, something I am going to change. Want this lid to be chamfered as well. Chamfer. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm doing a target weld. I didn't like that chamfer. I kind of wanted uh, these inside corners to have a chamfer as well. So I'm just gonna chamfer these other edges and kind of fix up some of what got dirty, dirtied. Reset those smoothing groups. too much of that. So I know I'm kind of going back and forth on this low poly. I'm just trying to figure out what I kind of want it to end up looking like. Because I'm not going to go back. <laughs> and I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. And then let's get on that unwrap. First things first, select all, do a planar map to clear out my UV seams. And one of the cool things about setting UVs is that, I mean not UVs, uh, smoothing groups is that uh, I can actually explode this by smoothing groups. String selection, relax to flat. Explode based on smoothing groups. Man, they changed all these icons. <laughs> there it is. Material ID. Flatten by smoothing group. And so that busted out uh, all these individual smoothing groups. And now you can see that I have seams where my smoothing groups were. Let's go ahead and throw that checker material on there. of stretching. Let's address that. Let's 
Hmm. Okay. So I'm already realizing that I want to adjust something about my low poly to help out my unwrap. I actually want to turn this bottom triangle because I'm going to put that seam right through there. Hmm, well, thinking, thinking. You know what? No, that's okay. I'll show you why. I had a thought, and then I'm just, I'm going to do it another way. Let's grow that. Break. Move all these pieces. I'm actually going to planar map that bottom chunk. I'm going to do this, sort of the same thing to each one of these sides. So select the center, grow it out, boom, boom. Let me select those corners. Right, planar map.
Let's add a couple of seams on these corners so that this lays out a little better. Kind of matching it with these other other seams. Break. Now I'm going to relax these. Relax. Set. Let's see. It's just going to be one shape, so planar map that from the X. Side. I think I'm just going to planar map all that so I can see what it is in my unwrap window. So there's the inside base. I know I want to detach that inside off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm having trouble selecting these. Uh, what I could do... Put an edit, mod edit poly modifier on the stack. And I'm select that lid. I'm just going to move it up like... 30 units. Now underneath that modifier is uh, basically me pulling that lid up and then as I go up the stack, unwrap, I can work on these and actually see what I'm doing. That's super weird. Okay, the edit poly modifier is not working, so I'm just going to do it in the base element. Goodness. Do this so weird. Look what it's doing. Fine. <laughs> Convert edible poly. I'll collapse it in. And then I'll move it. There we go. Goodness. Boom, boom, boom. Grow. Break. This 
little inside chunk isn't unwrapping properly, so I'm going to split. Stitch down, I guess. Stitch. Okay, that's the inside. So collapse, I'm going to go back to my poly here, I want to make a change, a little small change. These triangles I want to rotate inward. Unwrap. Happen. Uh, do a relax on this, and I'm going to go in and select these edges so I can split. And we just have a couple of straight pieces to deal with when we're packing, and we don't have a bunt like this. I don't know, empty square. There we go. this because we're getting some stretching on that the base of this because really it's flat with the, the unwrap camera might have to split these stretching now. So that's good. So we have our bottom. Where's the lid? Okay, that's the lid. We know because it's highlighting edges in blue, letting us know that those are shared seams. Actually want to relax these together so that they relax to the same size, the same proportional size as each other. angle snaps actually and my buttons messed up angle snaps off and that works properly relax those
side kind of want to rotate this the right direction and then align Oops. Align. So there's a little bit of a <clears throat> tilt in these pieces, and one, I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to try to fix that is to scale them all down flat like that. And that didn't work. So maybe an edge. No. <laughs> bit of a slight relax on those and that helped so you guys have heard me say before that uh, if you have a smoothing group seam you got to break it in the UVs and uh, we actually have smoothing group seams on the inside of these faces What I'm going to do scale these inner pieces in a bit. This is really the the most significant part of the mat of the unwrap. So I actually want to scale everything kind of to the sides. <clears throat> so that's most of the surf well on this top one. This is most of the surface area that will be seen.
normalize. That's a pack. with me it's just late JJ's tired I'm thinking this little piece is gonna be dark the inside's gonna be dark
so this isn't uh, the best unwrap, but uh, reaching the end of my night. I'm wanting to wrap this up. I think the last thing that I need to do is kind of separate out some of these uh, smoothing groups. Got to break them. So I'm actually breaking and just scaling them in. Probably go back at a later date and clean this up. But this is the basic idea. You can see there's some stretching in there. for the most part pretty even so I'm gonna collapse that and so that these uh, pieces for my low poly don't bake on to each other uh, it's also good that I move the lid out of the way but uh, I need to do the same for the lid uh, the high poly lid as well so I'm gonna raise that up line it up Transform type in. I'm going to slide it. It's better. And so now my high poly and my low poly line up. I'm going to save. I think now is a good time to save. I'm going to save increment. And then let's do a test bake. Normal map. Lighting map. Textures, it's gonna be great. 2019 AO. Create 2019 normal. Use existing channel. I'm gonna turn the padding up to like just, I don't know, all the way probably. <laughs> 64 options. We'll keep Ramus check on, see if we have any errors. Oof. Let's select all. And then I want to go a group and explode so that there's no groups in here when I try and bake this. Zero. I'm 
looks good enough for a test render. I'm gonna try it out. Oh, that went fast. Oh, that's because I didn't add anything. Ha, huh. pick. Uh, so that this goes fast, how I do when I do my pick methods, just select one, add it, pick list, pick the rest. Boom. That's the fastest way to go about that. Let me uh, reset the cage. Reset, and then I want to push. And really, the last thing I should probably put on here add diffuse map. Add. This will give me a difference. Uh, it'll give me a solid color map because I have a different color high poly on the wood versus the nails. So this will separate that. Ooh, my back. Ugh, this will separate that out for me. Create 2019 diffuse. <laughs> Render. Overwrite, overwrite. So that still went pretty fast. Um, let's check to see if that went through. Bump map, normal bump, add it into that slot. Bitmap in the normal bump slot. I have a flat normal for some reason. <laughs> Why would that be? For some reason my enable didn't turn on. Try again. There it goes. go so that's looking pretty good not good enough I think what I want to do is make this normal a 2048 render that yes yes Poly is looking like pretty good. Just to be safe, I'm gonna check it in on in Unreal, and uh, let's go ahead and finish out our rendering light tracer. My tracer is active. Let's turn the samples to 500. Drop that skylight in there and get that 
Light Tracer Ammo Inclusion rolling. Nice. So, I won't do a final quality setting on this. I'll do that in my own time. Uh, I think if this AO comes out nice, uh, I'm actually going to call it a day. And, uh,. I'll probably just clean up some of the UVs and do a final bake before my next texture video on this crate. I think it's at a good point. Oh, good stuff, a point. It's cool to see the shadows on the inside of that crate going and even the bottom of it has a little bit of a spotlight the only thing I have here to drink is tea <laughs> probably gonna matter but <clears throat> something to note is that I didn't break the the smoothing group seams on here and you actually you can see that normal map seam uh, baking in it's bad <laughs> I guess I could have paused the video, but I like watching renders. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like it's a it's work time watching these things. There we go. Awesome. Awesome possum. So there's my great low poly. I'm going to call this uh, video done for now. Hope you were able to kind of gather some uh, information from that. It's probably one of the better crates I've done. <laughs> uh, wooden crates I've done, low poly. Uh, in terms of like actually doing the lid. You can see some of those seams becoming a problem. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's not too bad. They're pretty well hidden in that they're, uh, they're on a natural seam. The normal map seams are on a natural kind of uh, seam of the model, which is great. You can get away with little tricks like that sometimes. Oh, well, I guess I said I would uh, be worth checking this in Unreal. Export. Let's do that.
Smooth groups, triangulate. Yep, 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 yep. Preserve edge orientation. FBX 2018. Automatic units. Yes. I guess I should have put that on zero. Let's do that again. Export, overwrite, save, yes. Same settings. Hmm. Open up my scene here. Ooh. Funny enough, I think I have my other crate in here. <laughs> One I made some time ago. I'll take I'll put it side by side. Ninety five percent. Thought I heard my computer just moan. It's, no. Come on, Unreal. I'm gonna go to sleep waiting for this thing. Okay, you know what, I think I'm, uh, I'm just going to call it a night. We'll uh, continue off from here the next time. Thank you guys for watching.